Welcome back to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. This video is on building batteries, but not just any battery. This is the OmniCell. If you're a member of our Discord community, you'll be well aware of this project. For people that don't know, the OmniCell system lets you build lithium ion battery packs in almost limitless configurations without the need for spot welding. For this video, I'll be going over the parts and how they work together. And once I get the hang of things, I'll do a full build with two battery packs. The first will be a 5S 2P pack with these MollyCell P42As. This will be using these parts which put five cells in series into two rows. The battery will be wired with a BMS and it will get used to run all the power tools that I have that suck right now to use because of their NICAP batteries. The second battery I want to build is using 18650 cells, probably the high capacity 35Es and this will go on my Enduro build and will power the 12 volt system, like the lights, things like that. And it's so I don't drain the main battery. To make this one, I'll clip together three of these units of six cells each, which will be of a 3S2P configuration. To make this so easy that even a battery novice like me can handle it, Joe has also sent me what we're calling a BMS squid, basically because it looks like a squid and it has a little BMS inside this heat shrink that will handle the charging and discharge of the packs, giving me up to 10 amps of power draw, which is plenty for running lights and stuff like charging phones. All I have to do is wire the ends to these three units and I'm good to go, which I think is pretty cool. Now these packs that I'm starting with are small 3S and 5S batteries, but this system can also be scaled up to build larger packs. And the biggest so far that's been in operation was a 72 volt battery running a BBSHD, so that's about 50 amps continuous. I'll spend a bit of time on the component parts and how they work in conjunction to enable these kind of amps to be drawn without any welding. The parts here in the gold are the main structural components of the battery system. They contain both the individual lithium ion cells as well as channel the connections between the cells. Along the sides, you can also notice notches and these notches allow for blocks of cells to be linked together to make much larger batteries. The two sides are held in place with clips that go over the ends of each module of cells, and these clips prevent the modules from coming apart when the opposite compression is applied during the process of making the cell-to-cell -cell connection. The connections themselves between cells are made using copper braid. This is sent through these channels. The positioning of the braid depends on the kind of pack you're making and the series and parallel connections that need to be made. The brake connections are held in place with screw terminals. These are produced in red and black, so it's very easy to visually see and verify which connection you're making to the positive and negative side of the cell. If we look at a screw, you can see a raised circle. This is the pressure point that when tightened with this tool, compresses the braid onto the positive or negative contact. The battery is not pushed apart when the screws are tightened because of the clips on the side. There is also a little BMS for this pack and that will get wired in and will keep everything balanced. And there's going to be a lot more information on how this particular part works in practice when I get to building these packs. There are lots of potential uses that I see for this system. Um, schools and colleges is a very, very visual learning tool. Small size battery packs like I have here for tools and backup power supplies. Enabling people to make batteries with little equipment and using recovered resources which I think could be huge in places that lack financial and material resources, and in off-grid storage systems and racks, and of course, batteries for light electric vehicles. There really are for me endless uses for this kind of battery system. The most important thing for me though, is that it opens up a conversation on how we build batteries for electric vehicles and how we treat and use the resources that comprise them. If we look at Tesla, right, what I'd like to see from Tesla is much less Spaceballs the movie references, and much less of making cars that pull so many amps that they need a three and a half ton aircon unit not to burn up. Instead, let's have much more on how they intend to deal with the mountain of batteries they're making that are gonna need processing in the next five to 10 years. It's a huge potential resource that Tesla is essentially locking away because the batteries are so damn hard to recycle. Right now, 95% of lithium ion batteries are not currently recycled because it's cheaper to mine new lithium. They're going into the landfill. It's insane. It's not sustainable. 
Elon must know this, but the path that Tesla seems to be making batteries harder to take apart and reuse and recycle, not easier, because they're pushing for greater integration into frames to save weight. If it sounds like I'm picking on Tesla, it's nothing personal. This is how all lithium-ion batteries are made right now, including for e-bikes. I'm also not suggesting for a second that what Joe has made here is the definitive solution to this problem, but it sure feels like a step in the right direction. Right now, there is so much going into the innovation of different battery chemistries, but I don't think the same effort is going into the reuse of resources and the reuse of batteries. I believe that the repair, recovery, reuse and recycling of batteries has to be made front and centre to vehicle production, not an inconvenient afterthought. And if we don't do this, then the idea that electric vehicles are the solution is a bit of a sick joke. We can absolutely do this though. If my friend Joe from Alabama can develop a system like this on his own in six months, imagine what the teams of engineers at Tesla can do. I mean, here's an idea. How about you hire this guy because he clearly has the kind of inventive mind and innovative thinking that I think is valued there. I cannot wait to build these batteries and I'll be bringing lots more in the Omnicell as I do this. If you want to see more of this project or get in touch with Joe and build some batteries for yourself, you can do so on the High Voltage Discord where he is a very active member. Thanks for watching High Voltage. Cheers.